In this tutorial, we'll walk you through how to build your own machine learning backend with Label Studio. The ML backend is a way to connect your ML models to Label Studio for pre annotation, automated active learning, or other integrations you may want between your ML models and the Label Studio system. We have many example ML backends in our Label Studio ML backend GitHub repository, and we'll use the Gliner example to help us understand the code and how it works. Let's dive in. Let's take a look at the structure of an ML backend. We usually run these as a Docker container, but you can run them differently if you want to. We do this in our SAM2 example. There are a few files we need specifically to run Docker. First, we'll need a Docker file where you define the container. You shouldn't have to edit this very much. We'll also need a docker compose.yaml where you can set your environment variables and a requirements.txt where you'll list the packages that need to be installed as prerequisites for your package. On the back end, this gets run as a WSGI server, so you'll also need a WSGI file. The only thing you'll need to change here is the name of your model, but we'll get to that in a second. The last file you'll need to pay attention to here is the model.py file. This is where all the magic happens, so we'll explore it on its own. You'll notice that there are a few other files in this folder that we haven't mentioned. They're related to our testing suite and our Docker setup, and you don't need to worry about them. Now, let's take a look at model.py and see what's really going on here. The main role of model.py is to implement your model class. Here, we'll call it Gliner model, but you can call it whatever you want based on the model you're implementing. Importantly, due to the structure of the rest of the code base, you'll need to make sure that this class inherits from Label Studio ML base. Label Studio ML Base is a class that provides a lot of functionality for using your model with Label Studio, many of which you won't need to worry about at all. There are a few methods you'll need to implement in your implementation of the class. The first method to override is the setup method. In this method, you'll want to define your model. Note that this method is called every time a model is called, so it's better to not initialize your model directly here or wrap the initialization in some logic that will ensure that the model only gets initialized the first time the method is called. This will help with latency. The other method you'll need to override is the predict function, seen here. The predict function takes two parameters, tasks, which is a list of tasks to be evaluated in Label Studio JSON format, and context, which provides details about any annotation actions that have been taken in Label Studio prior to this call being made to your backend. If you're doing something like image processing, this is where any key points you might have selected will appear. You'll implement whatever prediction logic you need in this method for each task in the task list. But it's important that your final return from this method is a model response object. Let's take a closer look at what that means. The model response object is a wrapper around a list of prediction value objects, which note the result for each task in the list provided by the predict function. The prediction value object comes from the Label Studio SDK. Prediction value objects wrap your result with other information needed by Label Studio to populate your predictions into the labeling interface. Depending on the task you're doing, what you put in the result or score section of the prediction value object might change. Basically, you'll need to populate the JSON that Label Studio will use to import the annotations by populating the result field of the prediction value object. For detailed examples, you can look at our documentation for importing annotations. Pay attention to the information in the results list, as that's what you'll need to populate to get the functionality you're looking for. We've talked a lot about the Label Studio JSON format so far in this video. It's the core of the format for the tasks parameter taken by the predict method, as well as the core of a prediction value. Let's take a closer look at what it really is. As you can see in this image, the Label Studio JSON format has three key sections. Data, where the data to be labeled is stored, annotations, where annotations from the system are stored, and predictions, where model-based predictions are stored. In this full example of a Label Studio JSON, we're looking at an image prediction task. As you can see, this whole file is one JSON item, which corresponds to one task. There is some metadata at the top, like the ID, created at and updated at timestamps, and the project ID number, and then the data dictionary we talked about before. Here, that only contains the image, but it could also contain the text. If you take a closer look, you'll notice that the annotation and prediction sub-dictionaries are very similar. While they have slightly different metadata, they both crucially contain the results dictionary, which contains all the elements needed to import the prediction into Label Studio, or that are created when you create an annotation in Label Studio. These are the fields you'll need to provide as well. In the description below, we've linked some more information about the Label Studio JSON format. Now that we understand the predict method, let's take a look at one other optional method, the fit method. The fit method allows you to implement a training loop that gets called right from Label Studio. While this method is called fit, 
You can also use it for any other operation that requires data persistence, like storing data in a database. The fit method takes two parameters, event and data. Event is the event type that was passed, and it corresponds to an action labeled studio, like annotation created or annotation updated. The fit method also takes a data parameter, which is the payload from the event. For more information on these, you'll want to take a look at our webhook documentation, as the fit method is called by a webhook integration that is automatically in place for you when you connect your ML model to Label Studio. Note that we recommend running long operations in a separate thread, as running them directly in the fit method will block the main thread. The only other thing to note about this method is that you'll want to make sure you set your model to the new green train model at the end of the function so that it can be used in future labeling tasks. The last step in editing the code is to edit the wsgi.py file. You can see in line 32 that from model we import the Gliner model. You'll want to do a refactor rename on this Gliner model so that you make sure that you rename every instance of Gliner model to whatever you've called your model in model.py. Now that we've finished setting up our code, we're ready to run our model. The first thing you'll need to do is run the Docker container that holds your model. Here, I've already navigated to the Gliner folder on my computer, and I'm going to run docker compose up dash dash build to build and run my container. Once this warning thing pops up, you know that you're good to go. The next thing that we're going to do is use ngrok to help us make this connection. Navigating to ngrok, we're going to use the command ngrok http http colon localhost 9090, because 9090 is the port where we're hosting Gliner model. As you can see, we now get a forwarding address. Go ahead and copy this forwarding address. Next, I'm going to navigate to my project in Human Signal. Here, I've already created a project called Gliner Demo. I'm going to go to Settings, and then I'm going to go to the Model tab on the left-hand side. This is where I'll connect the model. Click Connect Model. We'll give it a name. Here, we'll call it Gliner, but you can call it whatever you want. And for the backend URL, we'll put in the URL that we just copied. We want to make sure we toggle interactive pre annotations on, and then we'll click Validate and Save. Now that the model is up and running, you can also see that in the webhook section, we have a webhook that's been automatically added. This is how the fit method gets called. And that's it. You've now successfully built and connected your first ML backend. We hope this was helpful. For more, you can connect with us at humansignal.com or in our community Slack.